In this video, I'm going to give some worst case numbers for death toll globally and in the US and Canada from the coronavirus. These are gonna be top-down numbers and I'm just gonna cite the statistics and do a bunch of what ifs. I'm not saying that these numbers will occur, but I'm just curious as to what uh, the Ontario government and the Canadian government and various other provinces in Canada are supposed to be leveling with the public tomorrow, talking about sort of worst case numbers and projected six scenarios. So I thought it was timely if I do that uh, the night before. So I've, I'm downtown Ottawa. I've got the uh, Parliament buildings right behind me and I'll just kind of swing around. It's very pretty area. There's nobody around, a couple security guards. And in the back there, we have what's called the Eternal Flame. And uh, I'll just keep sort of swinging around just to let you see. Um, that's the East Block building right there. And then Center Block behind me with a lot of construction. And the West Block over here. So that kind of sets the stage. And uh, let me get right into uh, my discussion here. So, so lots of numbers. So this is top-down numbers, worst case scenarios. So the number that has been tossed around for if the, a large fraction of the global population gets the virus, you know, what are those numbers? So I've seen 30 to 70% of the planet getting the virus, those numbers being thrown out. Um, and the idea is that when you reach a certain high level with the population like that, then enough people get so-called herd immunity that the other people that don't get it are protected by that stage and the virus peters out. Okay, so this is sort of, now the time to reach that situation depends a lot on what countries do now. So if they do nothing, they reach that situation within their own country very quickly. The hospitals get overwhelmed and lots of people die. The idea is to reach that number slowly over time so that the population can build up an immunity and hospital systems can cope. So if 30 to 70% of the planet gets the virus, we have a global population of 7.8 billion people right now. So 30% of that global population is 2.34 billion. 70% of the global population would be 5.46 billion. Now, what are the death rates of the coronavirus? They start off fairly low, but they're still at least an order of magnitude higher than those from flu. And of course, the transmission of this uh, thing is much, much higher than, than flu. Um, but let's say the death rates, you know, and as time proceeds, if hospital systems as they get overwhelmed, the death rate rises significantly from direct deaths from the coronavirus, but also because the hospital systems are swamped, the percentage of people that are already in ICU units and emergency care um, for issues other than the coronavirus, they don't get proper treatment. For example, if the hospitals are all swamped and somebody gets a heart attack, good luck in having an ambulance coming and getting them to the hospital on time to save them. So let's take a death rate of, of say one, varying between one to 5%, okay? The latter case, 5% if the hospital is swamped. This is not an unreasonable number, especially in areas like, uh, you know, Africa, you know, in different countries where there's just vast numbers of people and not enough hospital care. But let's take that, so let's take the 1% number first. So if it's 30% of the globe getting getting infected, then 1% of that is 23.4 million deaths. If it's a higher 70% of the globe getting infected, then 1% of that would be 54.6 million deaths. That's in the 1% case. Let's look at the 5% case now. This is just math. Okay, the 5% case with 30% of the globe getting infected, that's 117 million deaths. If it's 5% of 70% of the globe getting infected, 
of 273 million deaths. Now we can go to an even worse case. Let's say the numbers are 7% and these are in countries where there's just not enough resources and no money to up the resources before the peak of the virus. Then say 7% uh, death rate with 30% of the population getting infected, that would be 164 million or 7%. If it's 70% of the global population getting infected, that would be 382 million people. So you can see the numbers quickly building up. The Spanish influenza flu was estimated to kill between 50 and 100 million people, but we just don't know for sure. And there were a lot of deaths um, that were attributed to World War I when they were really uh, more of the uh, Spanish flu, uh, the 1918 influenza situation. Now, how do these numbers break down for the U.S. and for Canada? I'll start with the U.S. So the U.S. has 330 million people. 30% um, of the U.S. population would be about 100 million people, rounding, you know, 99 million, but round to 100. So 230 million people would be, the rest would be the 70% case. Now, if there was a 1% fatality rate, that would be a million dead. Um, if it's 30% of the U.S. population getting infected, or 2.3 million dead, if it was 70% of the population. Now, the 5% case, just multiply those previous numbers by five, we're talking 5 million uh, dead, or in the 30% case, 70% uh, of the population being infected, 5% dying, that's 11.5 million. 7% case in the U.S., which I think could become highly likely given the inept response in the U.S. and the way the hospital system is, is not coordinated among states and lots of people just can't afford medical care. You know, 7% would be 7 million dead if 30% of the population is infected or 16 million dead if 70% um, of the population was infected. Okay, these are obviously huge numbers, but those are the straight numbers that you get um, from the assumptions that I've told you about. Um, okay, now what is the case in Canada? Now I should point out that these are direct deaths from coronavirus in the US and the globe that I've been talking about. You know, you need to add on, you know, maybe double those numbers or add 50% more to those numbers if in fact, uh, you include all of the cases of people with no coronavirus that have critical illnesses. Now, the Canadian population is 37 million people. So 30% of that is 11.1 .1 million people. 70% is 25.9 million people. If there's a 1% fatality rate, um, then those numbers work out for 30% of population being infected, 111,000 people, or if 20, uh, if if 70% uh, of the population is infected, those numbers would be 259,000 people. With a 5% death rate, you multiply those previous numbers by five, and you get 555,000 people um, with uh, the 30% infection rate and 1.3 million people with a 70% infection rate. Okay, so once again, these numbers, you know, I think it was uh, Stalin, don't, don't uh, quote me on this, but I believe he was the one who said, the death of one person is a tragedy. The death of a million people is a statistic. You know, when we get to these huge numbers, um, it's just hard for the human brain to comprehend. Now, um, I'll have to look at top up numbers because you can do your, your, it's easy to do the top down, sorry, bottom up numbers. It's easy to do the, the top down numbers because you know the population of countries and you can make different assumptions about the number of infected people and the uh, death rates depending on, you know, making some assumptions about, you know, the hospital system, the robustness or, you know, saturation of the hospital system. But to give you an idea, a report just came out yesterday talking about 600 
nursing homes in Canada that have been infected. Now there was a nursing home, of course, there's nursing homes in the US that have been hit really hard with up to one third casualties of people, the older people that are in the nursing home. In Canada, just uh, recently, in Bob Cajun, in a nursing home, uh, the infection went through and there's been, I believe, 14 deaths uh, so far. You know, about, I don't know, 40, 50 people in there. So some doctors are actually saying that if you've got a relative that's in long-term care, get them out, get them to your house. Their odds of, are much, much better. The nursing homes are like uh, cruise boats that don't cruise. You know, you don't have the luxury of the cruise boat. You're in, but, but there is a lot of temporary staff. There's a lot of part-time staff, younger people that go in and out of the nursing home. They're not paid very well. They have multiple part-time jobs, right? They associate with lots of people and uh, the nursing home is just a sitting duck to get infected. There's apparently, I saw a statistic tonight that in Canada, there's something like 400,000 people that are in, uh, that are, that are in these homes across Canada. So it's just a fraction, you know, and if, well, there are 400,000 people. I mean, if a third of people that get infected, you know, 30% of people in nursing homes get infected, right? Then that would be, you know, 120,000 people, right? And if you look at a death rate of about 10 or 11% for older people, you know, you're talking about, you know, tens of thousands of people just from that alone in Canada. So these numbers are getting very, very serious. And, you know, people just don't get a, get a good grip on the exponential function, how quickly uh, the uh, number of people getting infected by the virus is occurring, and, uh, you know, the ability of this thing to, to spread. So, so those are the top-down numbers. Based on the global population, um, we're talking about maybe 400, 382 million people was the highest number of all the different scenarios that I've discussed. 382, or you know, so call it 400, and that's just direct death. Add a couple hundred at least for people in critical care that can't get the help that they need because the hospitals are completely overwhelmed. It doesn't look good. The world is not stepping up adequately to address this problem. You know, you can read on Twitter the horror stories of some hospitals. You know, they can't get uh, protective gear. They can't get face masks. They have to wear a mask the entire day um, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we're supposed to be a technologically advanced society. Surely we can get our act together and get the equipment at least to the hospitals that, that we need to do. So the numbers globally, like I said, approaching 400 million just directly. The numbers in the U.S. with 7% death rate and 70% of the population infected, that would be 16 million people. You know, add another 10 probably for critical patients that couldn't be uh, get the care they need. You know, in Canada, the the, the high the 5% numbers would be you know 1.3 million, 7%, 1.5, 1.6 million. You know, add in half that, uh, you know, or another million for people that couldn't get the critical care that they needed. And we're talking about huge numbers. So basically, you know, this is a huge problem that is not going away. And uh, I really hope that the, um, you know, the, the politicians, you know, uh, Doug Ford, the Premier of Ontario, said that. He's going to level with Canadians tomorrow and let them know the stark numbers. Let's see what numbers he comes up with from Canada. And presumably those will be bottom-up numbers. You know, apparently Trudeau is going to discuss uh, with all of the premiers of the provinces in Canada um, the, uh, the situation. And they were going to let people know. And the, the reason this is important is because, you know, there, there's some... There's rumors going around, there's people still talking about, you know, this thing is much more serious than a flu, et cetera, et cetera. You know, people have been cooped up, uh, you know, with quarantines and shutdowns for weeks and, uh, you know, they're getting a bit restless because the numbers, the curves are still going up significantly for Canada. As I explained, you know, over a million Canadians went to the U.S. for March break. 
many to Florida, and then they came back, and that's why the numbers are rising rapidly now in Canada, 